Well, then who did create the heavens and the earth? Why do you use the word who? You see, you, you, you immediately beg the question by using the word who. Well, then how did it get created? Well, um, by a very slow process. Well, how did it start? Nobody knows how, how, how it started. We know the kind of event that it must have been. We know the sort of event that, that must have happened for the origin of life. And what was that? It was the origin of the first self-replicating molecule. Right, how did that happen? I told you, we don't know. So you have no idea how it started? No, no. When Ben Stein asks Richard Dawkins, what do you think is the possibility that intelligent design might turn out to be the answer to some issues in genetics or in evolution? He answered. Uh, at some earlier time, somewhere in the universe, a civilization e evolved by probably some kind of Darwinian means to a very, very high level of technology and designed a form of life that they seeded onto perhaps this, this planet. Um, now, th that is a possibility and an intriguing possibility. Mm -hmm. And I suppose it's possible that you might find evidence for that if you look at the, um, at the detail, details of biochemistry, molecular biology, you might find a signature of some sort of designer. Wait a second. Richard Dawkins thought intelligent design might be a legitimate pursuit? Um, and that designer could well be a higher intelligence from elsewhere in the universe. Well, but okay. that higher intelligence would itself have had to have come about by some explicable or ultimately explicable process. It couldn't have just jumped into existence spontaneously. That's the point. So Professor Dawkins was not against intelligent design, just certain types of designers, such as God. So Professor Dawkins believes that highly intelligent aliens from somewhere else in the universe may have created us. I think a lot of people, when they give up God, feel a great sense of release uh, and freedom. first self-replicating molecule. Right, how did that happen? I told you, we don't know. So you have no idea how it started? No, no. But that higher intelligence would itself have had to have come about by some explicable or ultimately explicable process. It couldn't have just jumped into existence spontaneously. That's the point.
example of, of, of design everywhere. And that's what the Bible says. You can tell by what God created, you know there's a creator. Right. And I love using this example of this plant called a bee orchid. And of course, uh, you look at the bee orchid and there's an obvious reason why it's called a bee orchid. It looks like a bee. It's shaped like a bee. It's got the coloration of a bee. It's, yeah, it's amazing. It, it's fuzzy yeah. like a bee. You know, bees are kind of fuzzy. Yeah. And uh, how these plants reproduce is phenomenal because not only does it look and shaped and colored like a bee, it smells like a bee. It smells like a female bee in heat every now and then. And that's part of the reproductive process wow. here. Um, so it attracts bees. That's what it wow. does. If you, if you look at the <laughs> schematic of this bee, and of course it was a PG show here, so we'll just, we'll just keep it simple. But the, these plants have both male and female parts. Okay. So if you look at the schematic of a bee orchid here, you see the bottom part, the labellum, that looks and smells and feels like a female bee. And then uh, you see this um, thing called the pollinia. It's got the, the shaft with the seed in it. So when these plants uh, reproduce, what happens is Mr. Bee's flying along one day, and he, you know, goes, hmm, nice perfume. And he, he lands on what he thinks is a female <laughs> bee, right? And, and But the way he mounts it, because when he lands, his head bumps into this pollinia, this shaft. And so this thing goes, and it sticks to his head. It's got, it's got glue on it. Unicorn bee. Yeah. And so he backs off. He's got this thing stuck to his head. He's going, what's, what's her deal, right? But uh, this, this thing has this, this mechanism in it that bends it down. So he's got this bent thing on his head. But you know, guys, one track mind, he's like, hey, perfume. <laughs> so he goes and he lands on what he thinks is another <laughs> female bee. And this thing inserts itself perfectly into the, the plant. And that's how these plants get pollination. reproduce. Awesome. How do you evolve that? How does a plant with no brain know how to shape and make itself smell like a female bee? Incredible evidence.